bubbled wine. The more you know. The more you grow. The more you grow. Hmm? What's that? I don't know that one. Welcome back to Talking Branches. We are in a new series. Brand How new. to be rich. Brand new series. Hopefully we're all rich by now. We, <laughs> rich in good deeds and in our willingness to share. Yes, oh, we are. That's very good clarification. We Thank are. you, Daniel. Yep. Uh, and we're on a new series, Vote C for Community. Um, who are you voting for just in the primary? Or the <laughs> 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 it's not the I'll, primary, it's I the will, general election. The general, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to disclose that. Okay, yeah. good. You don't need to. Okay. Um, what about so you? This, this series, this series. Well, we can try that. Maybe we do a separate podcast. Separate podcast, politically charged we, podcast. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll get to that okay. next, or not. But uh, so we're starting a new series called Vote C for Community. Oh, we started it this Sunday. Yeah. And it's going to extend through October, November, um, yeah. playing off the election a bit. Yeah, uh, playing off really what we believe as a church have, since the beginning of branches, um, the, the emphasis on community as well. Um, you you want to just give us a brief overview of why now? Uh, I know I touched on it a little bit, but w- mm-hmm. why vote C for community? Well, I mean, you know, if you if you people were there or have watched the message online, you kind of get the gist of it. But right now, I think it's pretty obvious that. Um, Voting is a really, I guess, just charged topic. Um, just the fact that this this election, 2020 election, is is so just contentious. Um, I think every election is, but this one seems to be way more contentious than any other one that I've lived through or can remember. Um, and so, at the same, like, it's caused so much division inside the church, mm-hmm. even um, definitely out in the world, but also inside the church. We're finding the church is being divided over this election, over which candidate you're backing. Um, and I think the church's primary role is not political. It's uh, to lift up the name of Jesus and, um, so, and, and to be united, actually to be united. Paul calls the church to be united all the time. Jesus talks about it all the time. Um, and the fact that, that Jesus invited his followers, his disciples into authentic community following him into an authentic journey with one another. And he invited people of all different walks of life, you know, from tax collectors to um, uh, zealots, you know, political zealots to uh, got fishermen. got a few of those. What's that? We have a few of those. In the world in, right now? Yeah, yeah, in our community. In our community. Everywhere. All over the place. <laughs> yeah, and, and what's just so crazy is that Jesus brought this incredibly eclectic group of of young dudes together uh, and unified them around one purpose, which is a purpose that's much greater than anything political that we could ever back. Mm -hmm. Um, It's eternal, it's forever. Um, You know, politics, political figures, they come and go. Um, Governments uh, come and go, uh, but God doesn't. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Mm -hmm. so that's, that's the, I guess, the core of who we are as, as Jesus followers. And so um, this series is really all about, like, let's not focus so much on whether we're Democrat or Republican. Let's focus more on, on creating a space where authentic community can happen. Yeah. Um, and um, creating authentic community who are following Jesus. You know, a group of people who are like, we are committed to following Jesus above all else. Yeah. And, and then so we're, we're just going to talk about what that looks like. How does that play out? How do we, as Jesus followers, live that kind of lifestyle um, every single day? Yeah, that's good. Um, a lot of good stuff in there. I think, I think it's really important for us to understand, and I, I hate doing this during an election cycle because, um, although it becomes necessary, because people are so wrapped up in their issues, uh, their candidates and stuff like that, yeah. the things that they're passionate about about um, and, and it's almost as if we're being passionate or too passionate about the wrong things or the wrong people or whatever at times um, which can really I guess hinder us from like w- what is important what is true like what is the people around us you know it, it and I think drives a wedge and I think that's the point you know like w- I don't want people to hear what we're not saying right like 
we're not saying don't vote. In fact, I would say, and I think you would agree, and the staff would agree, and the board would agree, it is important for us as American citizens to vote. Mm -hmm. um, that is, and, and to be passionate about um, issues, and to be passionate about preserving our right to assemble and preserving our constitutional rights. Like that is essential, but it does not pr proceed um, us living like Christ or preserving our ability to invite those who are far from God into a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so when our, when our political, I guess, agendas or political perspectives supersede our, um, our representing uh, the gospel, that's when it becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've talked about it during this a, a few different times and kind of touched on it, but to spend a whole series just kind of refocusing us on, man, it's community, it's relationship with Jesus and relationship with the people that God has placed us in the midst of, that matters more. Um, we're going to spend weeks talking about how that, what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. It's almost as if <clears throat> when the election ends, like we got to put away our like weapons or whatever that we probably shouldn't have had out in the first place and be like, all right, for the next four years or now, you know, in spite of this new information, this new candidate or this new mm -hmm. um, law that's passed, like how do we move on from here? Yeah. And sure, it can't be that we continue to tear down the people that we disagreed with because, you know, they're still in our community, they're still in our lives. Hopefully they're still in our lives. Right. If they're still in if our lives. If they're still, let's, right. Let's put down our arms right. and like, let's, all right, now that this has happened. Because I, I think really, and this is really what I hate saying, is like a lot of the things that we get excited about, even like I can, I've voted in several presidential elections now. And like, even when my candidate doesn't win and I'm like, oh no, it's the end of the world. I mean, it's, it's not the end of the it's world not. and I'm still here and I'm yeah. still okay. And it, yeah. it, it's, it turns out to not be as big of an issue as I made it. Right. And we're going out and destroying relationships because of it. I can't tell you the amount of people I've blocked on Facebook already because of it, <laughs> or have unfriended me on Facebook because of it last election cycle. Um, <laughs> working on it this time, just getting off Facebook altogether. That yeah. a lot. A um, but I think back to, I think it was a few, three, four years ago, there was that whole net neutrality, uh, you know, executive order or law that was passed and they were trying to privatize the internet or whatever and people like took political sides on that i didn't even understand it i'm like why are people taking political sides on this this seems like some super obscure like how does this really matter how are people really making this political even and people were getting mad at each other over it i'm like what's happening and that was like three or four years ago and i haven't heard a thing about it since it's like does, hmm. did that really matter and maybe someone smarter than me wants to chime in and tell me i'm wrong but i haven't heard one thing about it and i'm fairly i read a lot of news and stuff like that and i haven't heard a, a, a thing about it and, yeah. and it's like that stuff kind of comes and it goes and we get excited about it and the problem is, is when we re lose relationships over it or you know, it becomes a, drives a wedge in our community. Yeah, it drives a wedge in our community. <laughs> it, it can often uh, cause us to lose influence and yeah. the ability to speak into people's lives. And I think as Christians, that's, that's paramount, mm -hmm. that we would be, have permission to speak into the lives of the people that, I mean, for me, I believe the people that we are in the midst of are the people that God has called us to minister to and to love and to... Um, to influence. And mm -hmm. so if we ruin that for the sake of politics, um, there, there's a line that doesn't need to be crossed that I think gets crossed. Um, and again, like, I don't want to, I don't want to downplay the role that, I mean, there's a lot of people that you and I know that, that go to branches uh, or that we're connected with who are very involved politically and are, are fighting what, what I would consider good, good fights. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they should stop doing that. That's, again, don't hear what I'm not saying, but the gospel needs to be paramount. And right. as the church, we should be united around that, no matter what we disagree about on the periphery, on the peripheral yeah. Uh, uh, stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's good. So getting back to uh, the idea of community, yeah. you know, Jesus did some things like we talked about on Sunday where he called just like kind of a ragtag bunch of, yeah. of people from different walks of life. Why, why do you think Jesus pulled humans into his community? <laughs> well, I, man, that's a, that's a really broad question. And you know, a lot of things come to mind. Um, first, first of all, I mean, Jesus, you know, Philippians 2 talks about Jesus came down from heaven to be among us and to be like us, to experience, um, to experience what it was like to be, to be human. The writer of Hebrews talks about 
how, how easy it should be for us to go to Jesus with our issues because he understands mm. what it's like to be human. So to have human relationship was a huge part of him being able to experience what it's like to be human. Um, you know, without that invitation to, uh, into authentic community that he extended to so many people, when he shows up at Lazarus' grave and Lazarus is dead and Jesus begins to cry and weep and mourn, he wouldn't have been able to really have that emotion or experience loss mm. if he hadn't invited people into that, that close relationship. Um, also, f- for some reason, and this is still a mystery to me, uh, God has invited imperfect people like you and I to be a part of his plan to redeem all of humanity. Right. I mean, that's, what, that's his desire, right? That all would accept the gift of, of grace that mm. is extended to us through Jesus on the cross. Um, and he's invited us to be a part of that. And so Jesus coming and meeting us where we are and calling us out of our sin and, and loving us too much to leave us where we are, that required, um, that required him to invite people into a relationship with him. And the picture that's painted physically for us, right? So he's, he's physically inviting people to share physical life with mm-hmm. him. Um, and now after, after the resurrection and he ascends back into heaven, now he's still inviting us to do that same thing, but it's, it's a spiritual connection rather than a physical one. So it's, it's a demonstration of what he's continuing to do for all of us is that invitation to be in relationship with him. Right. Um, it is the you know, for us, we, we understand it. When we invite someone into relationship, marriage, friendship, whatever, we're entrusting them with our uh, vulnerability, with our realness, with our, with our uh, true self, and that's vulnerable, and Jesus did the same thing. Hmm. Um, so it's, I think it's an example. I think it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a picture to help, us un- to help us trust that he understands what it's like. Mm-hmm. Um, to be in relationship with people. So I think it's multifaceted, but. For sure. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool. Jesus basically took the, the original church leaders who ended up basically going out and leading uh, you know, small groups, you know, which were yeah. that early church, different yeah. groups in different cities, um, and showed them, in Jesus's ministry with them, showed them how to pray, how to you know, right. do communion, all the yeah. stuff that we do in our small groups. Um, and then sent them out and said, okay, here, here's how you do it. Now go and do the same mm-hmm. you know, with your churches and teach other people to do this. It's kind of cool that he showed them how to do that on a physical level so we didn't have any question like, hey, this is kind of how you, right. when you get together with other believers. This is what you do. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think it's a real testament to just the, to the, uh, how relational uh, Jesus is yeah. and, and God. Um, their, their relationship with each other was, with each other. was yeah. you know, broken here on earth. And I was reading this crazy thing that just blew my mind from someone that's much smarter than me who wrote, uh, Tim- Timothy Keller wrote this book that I was reading the other day and he says uh, that it's interesting to see how uh, Jesus cried out at the end of his life mm. to God and, and just kind of the, the way he did and he even asked like, hey, take this cup from me if, if you would, take this cup from me, this cup of suffering. And mm-hmm. then he says, why have you forsaken me? Um, and when you see later on, uh, the early mm. church, there's a lot of pe- martyrs and stuff that were uh, burned at the stake, and there's accounts of these people that were killed, um, and they took it more in stride than Jesus did. Mm. And it's kind of interesting that he like makes that reference, uh, basically saying that uh, imagine having a, a perfect relationship for all of eternity. I mean, really, it had been for like yeah. forever, and then to have that broken, like how bad it hurt for Jesus to have to be separated from you know his perfect relationship from right. his community. Right. And that's what he felt in that moment, uh, you know, wow. being, having the weight of the world's sins on his shoulders, um, dying. And it was like, wow. I mean, that's what, that's what perfect relationship was meant to be like. And, and that, is my, that is my favorite picture. I've said it before. That is my favorite picture of what heaven's like, mm. is that when in heaven, in eternity, we will all be in perfect relationship with each other. Mm-hmm. Sin is removed, which means any tension that you and I have between us that is identifiable or not will be removed. Mm-hmm. Um, that's such a beautiful thing. I'd never thought about um, Jesus experiencing that though in that moment, that separation when all he understood was 
the perfect community with mm. his father. Yeah. That is intense. It's pretty eye-opening, pretty yeah. cool. Um, so let, let's move on to uh, what small groups look like at branches right now. And I know we both have stories and we've probably shared them before, uh, just good experiences in small groups and maybe some bad ones as well. Um, but what are a couple times in your life where community, maybe it wasn't a small group or maybe it was just you know Christian friends um, that have really just uh, made an impact on your life? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I just, I, I remember, you know, just part of my testimony, part of my story of coming back to, to, to Jesus had so much to do with the people that were in my life at that, at that time. Um, I remember sitting, um, sitting outside of one of the buildings that we were, the, one of the first buildings we were meeting in. Um, and this it was, is Branches. This is Branches, okay. yeah. Um, this, would be, this would have been 2007 at some point late mid 2007 sitting out back nine o'clock at night um it was after we had practiced some playing music and sitting out back on the hood of my car and andy was andy kangas was sitting on the hood of his car and we just sat there and talked for an hour and a half in the dark you know mm -hmm. under the street light um just sitting there hanging out and i just felt like man i can be myself i can share um, the questions I have, the struggles I have, and I didn't feel judged, you know? Mm. And I had, some, I had some struggles, some real struggles. Um, that, that ability to be real, to be authentic, to be genuine, um, was without risk of condemnation, without risk of judgment, knowing that maybe I would be corrected or challenged or, um, but, but not condemned and not rejected no matter how dark my struggle was. Um, there's, nothing, there's, there's nothing quite like that on the planet, I don't think. Yeah. And Jesus is very much like that. Um, but it's, it's so refreshing to have another person who I can converse with face to face, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to have that kind of relationship is so freeing it takes the darkness of sin the darkness of your struggle it brings it into the light and allows you to actually begin to deal with it and start the journey towards healing and redemption uh, rather than feeling like you got to hide it um, those relationships like that are pivotal to our spiritual growth they're pivotal to um, addiction losing its power they're pivotal to healing from wounds of the past actually happening. Um, so, I mean, that's just like one example. I have multiple names I could bring up of, of, of and circumstances in the last 12 years of my life mm -hmm. and years previous to that. Um, and those were pivotal, pivotal relationships for me, um, providential mm -hmm. relationships for me in my life. And it had everything to do with how honest how, how honest I could be with that person. The more honest I felt I could be without being rejected, mm -hmm. without the risk of rejection, uh, the more pivotal that, um, that relationship was for me. And so I think it's so important for us as Jesus followers to have somebody in somewhere where we can be like that with mm -hmm. people. Um, instead of feeling like we gotta fake it or hide mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. So I don't know if that answers the question. No, I think that's good. I, so it's safe to say that uh, community is, is a vital part of your Christian walk. I think without community, you're, you're missing 90% of what it means to follow Jesus. Mm. I just pulled that percentage. It's a good percentage. But it's, it's a huge part. I would, I would agree. I think that's... I it's mean, a I, huge part. Going back to my wife and I's early marriage and being in a branch of small group with... Uh, married couple that had been married for 50 years and just to be able to glean like truths yep. and like how, what'd you do well and and it, it's surprising and and amazing just for their vulnerability just to say hey this is what we struggled with so watch out for this and like yeah. okay you know yeah. around when you get to year 20 which seemed like forever and you know we're over halfway there now it's like you got to watch out for this watch out for this you know make sure you're investing in each other and um you know reading praying with each other and like all this stuff i mean it's yeah. just it's just so you know, like you said, providential. Well, it's funny because it feels like there, it feels like there's like, you're searching for the secret and mm. the secret is like, it's those small deposits. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and the relationships, it's the same thing. Like small deposits over time uh, make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think sometimes 
that's where we get discouraged is we think, man, I'm, I'm kind of in relationship with people or I'm in a small group, but it doesn't feel like anything's really happening. Um, but there'll always be that one week or that one conversation that is massive. And all those small deposits over time is what enabled that, that conversation or that vulnerability to happen. Had those small deposits that felt like they were not worth it not happened, you wouldn't have had that, um, that powerful experience with that person or in that relationship. So true. Yeah, so um, I'm looking forward to the series. I think it's gonna be I'm, good. I'm, 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 too. I'm gonna be voting C for sure. Yes, um, me too. Not just because I have to, because I want to. Well, so, good, good. <laughs> so uh, Daniel, I would just ask if you would say a quick prayer over yeah. us, just over this entire series, because I think like we've discussed, it's so vital that everyone watching this everyone within our church and on the periphery like yeah. gets in community and, yeah. and, and good sustainable like healthy christian community yeah yeah god thank you so much for the relationship that you initiated with us god on the cross that you loved us enough to meet us right where we are literally physically where we are but god that you love us too much to leave us where we're at god uh, I pray that you would give us the courage to uh, step out and to get into community, to build relationships with, with those who love us and those who love you. God, I pray for the series and for the next several weeks. God, that you would speak to each person as they need to hear your voice. God, that you would challenge us each individually. And God, that you would grow our church in our uh, ability to be genuine, to be authentic, and to be real with one another. God, grow our capacity to be full of grace and full of truth as we navigate what it means to be in relationship, God, with you, our Father in heaven, and with those who you've placed us in the midst of, God. And I pray that that there would never be a circumstance where anything would take precedence over our responsibility and our opportunity to be followers of Jesus and to love the way that you have loved us. God, give us boldness and give us courage. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Daniel. Yep. Branches, Thanks, have a great week. We'll see you next time.